practice for section 6.2. We've got an equation that we're supposed to solve. Remember, we're doing this by graphing. Now, to get this in the calculator, what we want to do is get it equal to zero. And in fact, everything in this chapter and, well, everything for the rest of the year, if you're going to solve it, let's get it equal to zero. So first thing I need to do is add 6x squared to both sides. All right. And I'm going to kind of run out of room, so I'm going to come over here. So 6x squared plus 3x plus 6 equals 0. And now we'll go to the calculator. So type it in, 6x squared plus 3x plus 6, hit graph. And if yours doesn't look like mine, it's probably because the last one you did was throwing something off a really tall building and we had to change our window. So zoom 6, if you don't learn anything else about the calculator, learn that zoom 6 fixes just about everything. And that'll be, uh, that'll take you far in the SOL. Well, what's the solution again? It's an x-intercept, uh, also known as a zero or root, but again, x-intercept. It's not happening here, not crossing the x-axis. So this is one that you can't solve by the calculator, unfortunately. Uh, we could say no real solution, but at this point we know that everything has a solution, and your fallback is the quadratic formula. So a squared, I'm sorry, we've got to find a, b, and c, not a squared. Um, a is, is 6, B is 3, and, and C is 6. Uh, and this is what's going to happen on your homework if you get into a problem that you can't solve because it doesn't cross the x axis. You're going to have to go back and do quadratic formula. So these are nice if they cross the x axis, but it doesn't always happen. All right, quadratic formula one more time. Negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. If you don't have it memorized, you need to make that happen. Uh, you need to go ahead and do that now. If you don't memorize this formula, that's really going to hurt you and the rest of the class and for every math class beyond here. I don't ever ask you to memorize much, but that's one you got to memorize. All right, so negative b, in this case negative 3, plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times 6 times 6 again, that's a and c all over 2 times 6. All right, simplify what we can. Still under square root, 3 squared is 9. 4 times 6 is 24 times 6 again. I'm going to cheat. 24 times 6 is 144. Okay, and 12 on the bottom. So negative 3 plus or minus square root negative 135. Double check real quick, add 9 to that, it's 144, that works. All right, well, we're kind of sort of almost done. A couple things we need to look out here. We've, we've got a negative under the radical. That's going to have to come out. So negative 3 plus or minus i square root 135 all over 12. That, that i has to come out no matter what. And 135 really should try to break that down. So off to the side here, let's try to do a factor tree. And 5 is definitely going to go into it. Um, 5 goes into 120 times, and 35 is 7, so that's 27. So 9 and 3. All right, so it looks like we have a perfect square going on here. A pair of 3s. So let's rewrite this again. Negative 3 plus or minus. A pair of 3s came out with the i. Under the radical, you have a 5 and a 3 left, so 15 all over 12. Now, do you have a common factor among 3, 3, and 12? Well, you should know that's 3. The way I'm going to do this is to put this common 3 out front. That leaves you with negative 1 plus or minus i squared of 15 over 12. If you think of it this way, you'll always get it right. Take out your common factor, and only then can you divide it. So in the end, negative 1 plus or minus i squared of 15 over 4. Technically, it's two answers because of the plus or minus. Those are our two imaginary solutions.
Okay, so the point of this problem is that not everything's going to be solvable on your calculator. Occasionally, when you realize, let me pull it back up here again, when you realize you're not going to cross the x-axis, you're going to have to go back and do quadratic formula. Okay, the rest of them on this practice, I promise, aren't as bad. All right, so number two, 2x two minus 5 equals x squared. I really want you to practice making this equal to zero, so I'm making you do the same thing again. So I'm adding x squared, and now I have to put that in the calculator. Yeah. This one's going to work out better, I promise. So x squared plus 2x minus 5. Graph it. Remember to keep, th this one does have two solutions. Remember to keep y2 equal to zero, so when you do second trace, go down to intersect. All you got to do is get the x pretty close to where they cross. Enter three times, and you're going to get your answer. Uh, 1.4, we'll call it 1.45. That's one of them. We know there's a second one back here. So remember, second and over, you can move that X a little faster. Well, see how I'm moving a cursor around right here? That means I forgot to do second trace five again. Now my X is back up. So second and arrow key, make it move a lot faster. There we go. Pretty close. Good enough. Enter three times, negative 3.45. Remember, the decimal pretty much always ends in the same thing. So just heads up on that. All right, that's it. We're done. All right, I drew you a pretty little picture for this one in case the, uh, the word problem is kind of scary that maybe you could understand it. But we've got a boat in distress, and uh, it sees a, a barge coming by, so it launches a flare up in the air. And uh, obviously, you want your flare to be visible, so you want it to be in the air as long as it can be. So here's the deal. The, the gun's going to launch this flare at uh, 500 feet per second. The question is, how long will it be visible? Well, that's probably not quite enough information, but I'm going to go ahead and give you the equation here. It's negative 32t squared plus 500t equals zero. Okay, this would basically say gravity plus how fast I shoot it in the air. Um, equals when it hits the ground. That's basically what's going on, just to kind of give you an idea. So we got to solve this, and you're welcome to try it by hand, but more than likely you're going to want to do it in the calculator. So pull it up, okay, negative 32x squared. Uh, we, we're not going to use t because that's parametric equations on your calculator here. Uh, we're just going to use x. And if you want to know about parametrics, ask, but uh, not going to get into the details here. All right. Now, before I hit graph, remember what's going on. We are shooting a flare in the air off a boat 500 feet per second. So I'm assuming in the first second it's probably going to travel a long ways. And since my normal window only goes up to 10, we may as well open the window and do some changes now. All right. Your, your minimum... X is time in this case. We're not going backwards in time, so let's just start at zero. Okay. The maximum, I don't know. This thing may be in the air for a while. So let's start with 10 seconds. And if we go off the screen, we'll, we'll try a larger time. Again, X is time. So this is kind of the where you start and where you end. All right. Y is your height. Now, the ground is zero again, but to calculate it, we kind of need to go below ground. The theoretical. So leave it negative 10 and make a guess at how high you think it might go. 500 feet per second, I don't know, maybe 750 feet. Let's just see what happens. All right, hit graph, see what it looks like. Hey, it went higher than 750 feet and never came back down. So what that means is we need to go higher and we need to go over further in time. So let's try maybe 20 seconds and let's try maybe a more than a thousand. Let's try 1,500 feet. It ought to fit on there now. Huh. Well, it's still, uh, still went off the screen. Now, in chapter seven, you'll learn how to find how high this thing went. Uh, and you'll learn how to figure out exactly how long it took to get there. So we'll get into some physics in chapter seven. But to answer our question, we, we can do that here. It's how long it took to hit the ground. At time zero, we launched it. It went up in the air, it came back down at time something that we've got to find. That's when it hit the ground. 
So second trace, intersect. Now, I can't see my X. So here's what you need to look at. Um, 10 and 1800 is where it is right now. Well, I went to 20 for a maximum, so 10's about halfway. 1800 is up here somewhere. So let's just watch this, uh, watch the X. Probably around, I'd make a guess about 15 seconds is where it's gonna hit the, hit the water. So let's, let's keep going to the right. And, and notice that the, the time's increasing. The height is coming back down. There it comes. There's our object floating on down there. So there comes our flare. And again, you can watch the time go by, basically. All right. Now, remember, second trace intersect. We're identifying the first curve. Hit enter. Second curve's going to be the water or the ground. Hit enter. Tell it, yeah, sure, guess. Hit enter again. 15.625 seconds. All right, that's a real precise decimal, so I'm going to go with the whole thing. So the time it takes, now I'm using T because I'm talking about time. That was the question, right? How long will the flare be visible? Hopefully you know length of time is, uh, you know, time. 15.625 uh, seconds. All right, so that's how long I've got for the barge to spot me before that flare goes out. All right, hope that's helpful. See you in class tomorrow.